What's up guys, Asian here again with another PTS video and today we're going to be going over the PTS patch 4.3.3. Um, I actually took some time and kind of did some math so that way we can get a more complete view of the implications of this particular patch um, on the PTS right now. So that's kind of why this video took a little bit to kind of create just because I did want to verify some mathematics. I did want to go through everything and make sure everything was uh, complete before I decided to make this video. Um, generally speaking though, um, there were a couple of changes in this patch notes that are going to affect uh, overall class balance or I should say racial balance um, as well as potentially some some unexpected things might might have happened, uh, especially with the CP changes, uh, which I'll have to kind of test more thoroughly to kind of see how the CP changes affect certain builds. So, PTS 4.3.3, uh, we're just going to skip right ahead to the combat and gameplay section. So, um, so one of the big things here is that the they've changed a couple of things to be considered proc abilities. So they changed the champion point passes resilient and critical leech to. Uh, be considered procs so it can't proc other proc ability sets and kind of same thing with the heal from siphoning strikes and its morphs um, they are not considered proc abilities so they can proc other proc abilities um, so you're basically kind of changing up what can proc certain things um, so that's probably going to be more for a pvp thing less so for a, a pve kind of thing the big thing here are these two points here uh, so you have the champion point changes as well as a racial change that is going to significantly affect uh, or i shouldn't say significantly affect but it is noticeably going to affect pve the racial balance here so the champion points the 20 percent bonus is now going to work across all of the intended um flat stat increases so the cp recalculation is now now in effect and I have it on the PTS and I can confirm that it is working um, as uh, as it should although not necessarily the way that we anticipated to do so more on that on a little bit um, so now that they did update some of the racials not all the racials so they only updated three of the racial passives right now for, so they updated the wood elf racial passive hunter's eye so they increased the duration to six seconds from four seconds um, and this is to make up for the buff applying immediately as you dodge roll um, so this is the buff that where you dodge roll you get the 10% additional movement speed plus now you get the 1500 additional spell and weapon penetration. The Imperial passive, the red diamond passive was reworked a little bit so the 5% block and bash cost reduction is now a 3% cost reduction to all abilities. Um, and I'll go over that uh, in a little bit uh, what that really means for Imperials as a tanking uh, kind of prospect. Um, there is a known issue though that the heal from rank 3 currently does not have a cooldown and it will be fixed before the update goes live. And then Khajiits, this is probably going to be the biggest change in the racial passive. So the feline ambush passive, which is the 8% spell and weapon crit chance, is now changed to 10% critical damage and critical healing. So this is actually um, a noticeable change in the kind of DPS output of a Khajiit, although not completely noticeable on stamina dps is going to be more noticeable on magicka dps um so first let's go over the champion point changes so initially we thought that the cp changes would be multiplicative in other words it would be multiplicative with the other current modifiers in the game so let's say we uh have warhorn up and we have the undaunted passive as a stamina dps so our modifier is uh, an additional 12 percent the assumption was that the CP modifiers would be multiplicative with the 1.12%. So instead of uh, having it be uh, 1.2 plus the uh, 0.12 to create 1.32, we would anticipate it to be 1.2 times the 1.12 for a little bit over that 1.32. However, that is not actually the case. So I actually made a topic on this on the PTS forums, and just to confirm with the devs whether this is intentional or not, just because the way that we anticipated it was that it would be multiplicative, but CPs are considered additive. So this is just screenshots from the spreadsheet that I typically use just to kind of make the topic my, uh, myself. I do have a link down in the description below to an updated spreadsheet, uh, so that way you guys can play around with the values yourself now, now that it's, it has been updated. Um, so these were the conditions that I used, so all of my attributes into Magicka, I was using Clockwork Switched Filet, I was a Khajiit, I had, I was running Mother's Sorrow and Spell Shredge, so I had two max Magicka bonuses. I didn't have Warhorn, I was on my front bar, so I assumed 21% as my mo modifiers, so that would be the... Um, 5% from Inner Light, 2% from Magicka Controller, 8% from Siphoning, 6% from the Undaunted Passive. So this Undaunted and the Siphoning gave me 14%, the 5% from the Inner Light gave me 19%, and then an additional 2% from Magicka Controller gave me that 21% that you see there. All my armor pieces had Max Magicka enchants, and then I had 7 Divines pieces. 
So on live right now, this would give me 36,054 Magicka, give or take a few points here, just because of the rounding issues. Um, if it was additive, then we would see, I know this number is a little bit hard to see, but it is 36,018, thereabouts. If it was multiplicative, we would see 37,091. So here's the Max Magicka with the, um, I also did it with the Mage as well. So the Max Magicka with the Mage is 40,376, which is pretty much right on the nose with the additive, not very close to the multiplicative at all. So the additive with the mage is 40,379. So just a little bit off, but again, that's probably due to rounding issues in, in with the Google Sheets, um, which is the multiplicative, which is 41,581. So clearly we're, it's a big enough difference to say, no, this is not a rounding issue. This is actually the, the additive. And then I did it again without the mage, Mundus, just to make, verify 36071 which is much more closer to the 36018 from the additive compared to the 37091 from the multiplicative. So the CP changes is additive, not multiplicative with the uh, other modifiers in the game. Now, this is not a big deal for stamina DPS because stamina DPS, you don't have as many max stamina modifiers as Magicka do. Um, so you see with max, uh, without Warhorn, your max stamina modifier is only that 2% from Undaunted Passive if you're going 7 medium, or 4% if you're going 6 medium, 1 heavy. Um, Magicka DPS, on the other hand, you can see here, without Warhorn at all, we have 21% on our front bar, if we're using Inner Light on our front bar. If we're not using Inner Light, then we lose 7%, but that's still 14%, so still 7, seven times greater than what Stamina DPS have, and then when we add in Warhorn, it becomes 12% versus 31%. So this is a much bigger deal for Magicka DPS compared to Stamina DPS, just because Magicka DPS have more Max Magicka modifiers. And this is going to be particularly impactful for those of you guys who are running Necropotence. Um, Necropotence, if it was multiplicative, we would see a much larger gain from that five-piece bonus, but because it's additive, we do end up losing uh, a fair amount of Magicka. So just based on this, without any sort of Necropotence or anything like that, um, we're already seeing uh, from the multiplicative to the additive, we're losing about 1,000 max Magicka. Um, if we take that into kind of effective spell damage, um, 1,000 divided by 10.5 is we're losing roughly 95 or so uh, effective spell damage, which is not that big of a deal, but it might end up being noticeable uh, if if this is intended. Um, if it's not intended, then it's, it is what it is, um, but it is additive right now with the other modifiers. Now, the other thing that we want to go over is the Khajiit passive. So if we hold it on back here, the Khajiit passive is no longer 8% crit chance, it is now crit damage. So the question is, of course, how does that affect whether or not the Khajiit is going to be best in slot anymore? Is this a buff or is this a nerf? So much like how we want to compare Thief versus the Shadow, we basically want to look for our break-even point. So again, we have our values here. So the 8%, this is from the Khajiit passive, the old Khajiit passive, and then we have 10% crit damage. This is from the new Khajiit passive. We figure out our break-even point, which is our, I should say, break-even ratio, which is 0.8. So our that's our break-even point. Now, if we plug in our critical damage, we can solve for our break-even point X, which is our crit chance. So this crit chance is before we apply the thief, and if our crit chance is larger than X, then the new Khajiit is a buff, the, new, the, the change is a buff. If your crit chance is lower than X, then the new Khajiit is a nerf. So if we set our crit damage equal to 1.07 or 207 additional crit damage, so that's your base, which is half uh, 0.5, minor force is 0.1, Templar passive is 0.1. Your, if we have 22 points of the Elfborn or Precise Strikes, and then we have Major Force active, it gives us 1.07. Then we just plug in and we solve for X and X is 0.856. Now let's say we drop major force because obviously major force is not gonna be up at all times. If we don't have major force up, then our crit damage drops down to 0.92. We solve for X and we get 0.736. So in other words, with major force active, if our crit chance is greater than 85.6, then the new Khajiit passive is an overall buff. If it is lower than 85.6 with Major Force active, then this new change is a nerf. And then we can say the same thing without Major Force. If our crit chance is greater than 73.6, then this new Khajiit change is a buff. If it is lower than 73.6, then this Khajiit change is a nerf. So what does this mean for Stamina and Magicka DPS? So if you are a Stamina DPS and you're running Reliquent and Advancing Yokeda, your new crit chance, if you're running um, one precise, it's going to be roughly about 82% or so. Um, I'm just, it's like an average. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more than that if you're able to maintain 100% uh, advanced Yokeda uptime, but we're assuming that we're not able to, so kind of rounded down a little bit, did some slight modifications, so it's going to be about 82% or so. So 
That does mean that with Major Force active, this change is going to be a nerf. But if Major Force is not active and you're running Advancing Okada, it's going to be a buff. So that's kind of how it is with stamina DPS. Generally speaking, if you are a stamina um, Lightblade or a stamina Templar, then these changes are going to be a nerf when Major Force is up. So when Warhorn is active, uh, I should say the first 10 seconds of Warhorn is active. But when you don't have Major Force up, this is actually going to be a slight buff instead. So it's a li little bit complicated uh, for stamina DPS. Um, however, for Magic DPS, this is an overall nerf. It's basically nearly impossible to get up to that 73.6% crit chance as a Magic DPS without um, basically giving up your Monster Helm set. You basically have to use two one-piece crit sets and if you want to reach that break-even point. So generally speaking, for Magic DPS, this is going to be a nerf. Uh, it's going to be a nerf for Nightblades and Templars, which means it's definitely going to be a nerf for non on crit damage classes um just because actually no it might actually not be a nerf for non-crit damage classes because now we're going to drop this down by another point one so we decide to go ahead and drop this down by point one um oops that should be a point here so if we drop this down uh if we assume we're not a crit class and then we go ahead and do this then with major force your break even point is 77.6 and without major force active we have a break-even point of 65.6. So, um, generally speaking, for Magic DPS, this is going to be still going to be a nerf just because 56.6... Um, actually, no, 65.6 is actually... you. The, it is considered a buff, then. If you are a non-crit class, uh, running Mother's Sorrow, I should say, or actually even without Mother's Sorrow. No, you have to be running Mother's Sorrow in order for this to be a buff. Um, that's basically kind of the gist of it from Magic DPS. Um, and if you are a crit class, then it's going to be very, very difficult for this to actually be a buff. Um, it's generally going to be a nerf if you are a crit class for Magic DPS. Um, but for stamina DPS, um, whether if you are a uh, crit class, then it's going to be a nerf when Major Force is up. It's going to be a buff when Major Force is down. Um, without that additional crit damage, it's generally going to be a buff overall. Um, just because of those changes there, 77.6 and 65.6. If you have that Advancing Yokated buff all the way up, then generally speaking, you will be able to uh, get to that, be higher than that break even point, so it will be a buff overall for you guys. So this change is a little bit, um, going to be a little bit, uh, complicated for stamina dps it's definitely a little bit you definitely need sort of like a two by two box to kind of be like if you're a magicka non-crit yes buff a magicka crit no kind of thing um but generally speaking this is more or less going to be seen as pretty much not a much of a change for stamina dps or magicka dps um for crit classes it's going to be a nerf for non-crit classes it'll generally be a buff overall for khajiits um so that's kind of how the khajiit passive plays out there so yeah, a couple of changes here and there. I do need to test a couple of things out to make sure that this math, the math actually holds true. Um, I might be able to, I still have some parses saved from 4.3.2 before they made the Khajiit changes. So I will be comparing any new Khajiit parses to that just to kind of see whether or not the mathematics hold up, whether or not is that ac it's actually a buff or a nerf. Um, and then for CP changes, uh, we will be taking a look a little bit at CP changes um, just to kind of see what sort of max, max magic values we can get as well as how that impacts pet sorks with Necropotence versus your traditional um, like spell strategist or Sororiana pet sork instead. So that is pretty much it for this video. I have links down in the description below to the full patch notes for 4.3.3 as well as a link to the updated spreadsheet um, so you guys can go ahead and check that out and you know make your own calculations there therefore uh, and just kind of play around with different set combinations there. Uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys found this informative and I'll see you guys in the next dungeon.